Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our second video in our new series entitled Church Under Attack. As I said in our first video, the church from its very inception, from the time of Jesus, we have been under constant attack by our enemies. They stomped and they've stomped and stomp as they may, they cannot, will not, and have not stomped out the church of Jesus Christ because Jesus told us that the gates of hell shall not prevail over his church. Their tactics will be deceit and lies. They will pretend to be a part of you, a part of the church, the church of Jesus Christ. They will pretend to be your friend, but the truth is their heart is not with you. Their goal is to lead you astray. The scripture warns us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. The Catholic Church took over the persecution of Christians, also known as the Reformers, from the Romans in their effort to spread Catholicism. Fox's Book of Martyrs, when describing the persecution of the church over the centuries, said this, Thus far, our history of persecution has been confined principally to the pagan world. We come now to a period when persecution under the guise of Christianity committed more enormities than ever disgraced the annals of paganism. End of quote. The popes took the opportunity to seize power when the once powerful Roman Empire began to crumble due to economic inflation, frequent civil wars, barbarian attacks, and according to the historian Edward Gibbon, the spread of Christianity. He believed that the spread of Christianity played a big part in the corrosion of the Roman Empire. If that is the case, then is it any wonder that the true church, the church of Jesus Christ, is under constant attack by its enemies? And who are its enemies? Anyone or any organization that teaches a doctrine that raises itself above the commandments and the precepts of our Creator God, or who seeks to supersede the position of God. Any person or any organization who, who feels threatened by, by God because they want to rise above God have always seen the church as its enemy. As the Christians sought to humble themselves before their God, they refused to participate in the worship of other gods disguised as saints, coupled with their denial of the equality of man's word with the word of God. Thus, they were persecuted. Pope Innocent III authorized certain monks to be inquisitors, to inquire for and deliver over the reform to the secular power. Their power was unlimited, their accusations unquestioned. They proceeded against whomever they please without consideration of age, sex, or rank. It did not matter whether the, the accuser was a man of integrity or a man of disrepute. His accusation was taken as the gospel truth against any and all Christians who were accused. They made being rich a crime equal to heresy, causing many of the rich to be accused of heresy, being favorers of the heretics. Friends or family, no matter how close, could not serve anyone imprisoned on account of religion. If they dared to give even a little straw for a little bit of comfort, or even a cup of water to soothe a parched throat, they would be persecuted or prosecuted for favoring the heretics. Not even lawyers dared to plead the case of his own brother. Things were so bad. 
In A.D. 1524, a man by the name of John Clark set up a, a bell on the church door, wherein he called the Pope Antichrist. For this offense, he was repeatedly whipped and then branded on the forehead. He also demolished, demolished some images or statues for which his right hand and nose was cut off, his arms and breast torn with pincers. Pincers are tools such as grips or pliers or claws or tongues and such things like that. He endured these cruelties with such fearlessness and courage that he was able to sing the 115th Psalm, which expressly forbids idolatry. After that, he was thrown into the fire and burned to ashes. Many persons of the Reformed persuasion were, and about this time, beaten, racked. And racked is stretched out on one of those racks that we talked about in our earlier video. Scourged and burnt to death in several parts of France, but more particularly in Paris and Malta and Lemison. A native of Malta was burnt by a slow fire for saying that mass was a plain denial of the death and passion of Christ. Francis Brebard, secretary to Cardinal de Palais, had his tongue cut out and was then burnt for speaking in favor of the Reformed Christians. The belief is that when a Catholic priest stands before the altar, he stands there as a mediator between God and the people. He has a sacrifice to offer, which is an act and passes between God in himself alone. Therefore, the Catholic Mass was in Latin, which the people did not understand what was said or what was being preached. But that belief and that custom are in complete contradiction to the Scriptures. Look at what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Also, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Paul makes it plain to Timothy and the church that we have one mediator between God and man. And that one mediator is our Lord and our Savior, Christ Jesus. And Jesus himself makes it plain that we are to teach the people to observe and to obey all that he commanded us. Therefore, they must, the people must understand what they're being taught and what, they're, what we are teaching them. They need to be able to read the scriptures for themselves. Be like the Bereans who, who searched the scriptures daily to see what Paul was saying, if that was actually the truth or not. But in the dark ages, the people were kept in the dark regarding the truth of the gospel. Only the clergy were allowed to read the scriptures. The lay people were not allowed to, to even own, read, or distribute scripture. A.D. 1546, a man by the name of Peter Chapeau brought a number of Bibles to France that was written in the French tongue and publicly sold them there, for which he was brought to trial, sentenced, and executed a few days later, all for trying to arm the people with the word of God. He's trying to give them the gospel, and he was murdered for it. In the year A.D. 1554, two men of the Reformed religion, along with the son and daughter of one of them, were apprehended, committed to the castle of Navern, and after being examined, they confessed their faith 
and there they were ordered to be executed. When they were smeared with grease, brimstone, and gunpowder, this is what they cried. Salt on, salt on this sinful and rotten flesh. For this, their tongues were cut out. They were afterwards burned with fire, which quickly consumed them because of the combustible matter that they had been smeared with. Protestants were barred from all offices, trades, privileges, and employment. They were depriving them of the means of getting their own bread. They were de de depriving them from working that they may be able to feed their families. They even went as far as forbidding the midwives to officiate any Christian birth, compelling the Christian women to submit themselves to the brutal Catholics who then took their children from them to be educated by the Catholics. And at the age of seven, they were made, the children were made to embrace popery. And in other words, the doctrines and, tri and, and rituals of the Roman Catholic Church. In AD 1685, the king of France issued a revocation of the edict of, uh, of Nantes. The news that the king would no longer suffer any Protestants in his kingdom quickly spread throughout the realm. And, and, and they, it, it was said that they must change their religion. They were forced to change their religion or they would have to leave. In every parish which were, were popish governors and spies that were set over the Protestants, they all assembled the Christians and told them that they must, without delay, turn Catholics, either freely or by force. By refusing the order, the, the Protestants replied that they were ready to sacrifice their lives and estates to the king. But their consciences being gods, they would not so dispose of them. Immediately, the troops seized the gates and avenues of the cities, placing guards in all the passages and entered there with swords in their hands and crying, and I quote, die or be Catholics, end of quote. In short, they practiced every wickedness and horror that they could devise to force them into to changing their religion. But the Christian held fast to the truth that there is but one God and one mediator between God and man, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They hanged both men and women by their feet or by their hair and smoked them with hay until they were nearly dead. Then they would bring them out and try to force them into recanting their Christian faith. And when they, they would not, they would put them back, hang them up, and smoke them again. By doing this so many times, and with other torments that they, they forced on these people, many were forced to yield to, to their request of recanting. Others, they plucked up or plucked out all of their hair, all of their beards with pinchers. Others, they threw into great fires and then they pulled them out again and then they threw them in again and then they pulled them out trying to extract a promise to recant. According to the Fox's Book of Martyrs, some of the Christians, they stripped naked and after offering them most infamous um, insults, they stuck them with pins from head to toe and they cut them with pen knives and sometimes with red hot pincers. They dragged them by the nose until they promised to turn Catholic. Sometimes they tied fathers and husbands while they ravaged their, their wives and their daughters before their eyes. Multitudes they imprisoned in the most foul smelling, unhealthiest dungeons they could find where they practice all sorts of torments on these people in secret. Their wives and their children, they shut up in monasteries. 
The other atrocities perpetrated against the Christians by the Roman Catholic Church were so horrible that even their antagonists felt pity and compassion for them. Other evils and crimes committed by the Catholic Church in the name of religion were blamed on the Christians, such as the Crusades. The first crusade was called for, organized, and launched by Pope Urban II in A.D. 1095 to A.D. 1099, in an attempt to recapture the Holy Lands. His principal objection or objective was said to be the Christian reconquest of the sacred city of Jerusalem and the Holy Land and the freeing of the Eastern Christians from the Muslim rule. They captured Jerusalem in July A.D. 1099 after massacring many of the city's Muslim and Jewish inhabitants. The Second Crusade was led by two Roman Catholic kings, Louis VII of France and Conrad III of Germany. The, the Knights Templars and the Roman Catholic Church acted as bankers. The Third Crusade, which was from AD 1189 to, to AD 1192, was an attempt by three Roman Catholic monarchs, Philip II of France, Richard I of England, and Frederick I, Holy Roman Emperor, along with most of the nobles of France, with various archbishops, bishops, with earls, barons, and gentlemen to a very large number. The Pope did whatever he could do to set forward this holy business in sending his ambassadors and friars into France to stir up the people to follow the king and to contribute to his journey. It was granted to the king to gather um, of the Catholic Church of France by the Pope's authority the tenth part of all their goods for three years. Upon this condition, the king likewise would grant to the Pope the twentieth part for so many years after to be gathered of the said Church of France, which they all agreed on. The Fourth Crusade was authored by Pope Innocent III and was launched in A.D. 1202 to A.D. 1261. He was young, enthusiastic, and ambitious for the glory of the papacy. He revived the plans of Pope Urban II. Neither emperor nor king answered his summons, though. But a number of knights, and mostly they, which were mostly French, took the crusaders' vow. So to make a long story short, the crusades were not organized, they were not led, they were not fought by the Christians, also known as the reformers. So, in summary, the Christian church has been infiltrated, subverted, imitated by impostors pretending to be Christians but are not. It has been persecuted by the same said ones that are pretending to be Christians, which then gives Christianity and Christians a bad name. The Roman Catholic Church has severely persecuted the Christians, also known as reformers. They tortured, humiliated, and brutalized the Christians in a gruesome attempt to convert them to Catholicism. Their property was confiscated. Their, they were denied jobs. They were denied positions. They were even denied the ability to feed their own families just because they were Christians and they refused to convert to Catholicism. Even in this day and age, Catholics do not usually identify as being Christians, but they identify as being Catholic. History has blamed the Crusades on the Christian faith, but the truth is it was not the Christians, but it was rather the brainchild of the leader of the Roman Catholic Church, Pope Urban II. The Crusades were all organized, funded, led, and fought by Christians, Meanwhile, all of this was going on, the Christians were being murdered, 
burned at the stake, crucified, tortured, and massacred by the hundreds by the same organizers of the crusades that they are blamed for. It has always been that the Christian church has been blamed for crimes that they did not commit. But let me leave you with a little bit of encouragement. Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30 through 31 says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember. God knows where we are, and he is always watching over us. Remember also that our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is coming back real, real soon to get us. Thank you so much for joining me in this second video in our series, Church Under Attack. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.